Hi, I'm Sarah with Sarah's Dawn Creations, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make this glass glitter um, wine glass for you. So the supplies that we'll be using today are a couple of colors of spray paint. This one is Wine Stain by Color Shot. This one is Copper Rose by Rust-Oleum. And then you'll need some glitter. The glitter I'm using today are Sands of Time from the Glitter Guy and Anchorman from the Glitter Guy. You also will need some Mod Podge. I'm using the dishwasher safe kind, but I think you can probably use any kind of Mod Podge that you would like. Of course, you need your stemless wine glass, and then you'll need some epoxy, and I use Mr. Nola's glitter glass coat. This glass is already prepped and ready to go. To prep the, the tumbler, all I did first was I windexed all around to get it nice and shiny. And then I washed with Dawn Power Wash to get it good and clean. And then finally I put some 91% alcohol on a paper towel and rubbed the whole glass down. I make sure that I'm wearing gloves anytime I touch the tumbler because I don't want any oils from my fingers to get on the cup. And I also don't want any fingerprints on there. The last thing I do to prep is take a lint-free cloth, and I love these. These are e-cloths. I got them on Amazon, and they are fabulous. They're my favorite lint-free cloths. So I use the dusting cloth first, and they also have what's called a polishing cloth, and this just makes sure that there's no lint anywhere on the tumbler. All right, the next step is to tape off the area that I um, don't want glitter to get onto. So I'm gonna do a V shape. Um, most people would probably measure here. I'm more of an eyeball it kind of a person and I'm impatient, so I don't measure it. But if you want to, you certainly can do that. So I'm just gonna tear a couple of pieces of tape and eyeball about where I want mine to go. And then I also keep in mind that my glitter is only going to go to this part here. So I have to remember that the blue part would also be part of the clear, if that makes any sense. So like the first time I did this, I made that a little bit wider than I wanted it to go. And then I take my next piece of tape and try to find a similar angle. And then I just adjust it until I have it kind of at the angle that I want. And I want a little bit more at the bottom and this one isn't quite angled the way that I want it to, so I'm gonna move this one over a little bit. This is where measuring would probably come in handy. All right, I'm happy with that. So then I'm just gonna tear off the edges. Ah, gloves, sticky, sticky. And then at the bottom part here, I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to make a nice line. And I'm just gonna follow the rim of the cup here. Also going to just clean up the edges here so I have a nice straight line. And that one's already straight. Okay, ready for the next step. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and lay our, our vinyl down. So this is just permanent adhesive vi uh, vinyl. I think it's Oracle brand and I'm just going to start weeding the little spots out and placing them on the tumbler. And there's not a re really right or wrong way to do this. You just kind of put them on there wherever you want them to go. I try to make the pattern not too symmetrical so that it looks natural. But I also don't want them spaced too far apart either. 
that one stuck on there. I'm also not pressing super hard. You might be able to see, you can see a little bit of bubbles in the vinyl at this point. I'm not too worried about that right now because I'm just trying to place them where I want them. Later, I'm gonna go in and smooth all of that out. And all right, and now that I've got all of the decals on, I'm going to put my gloves back on and we're gonna make sure that there are no bubbles or lumps in the vinyl so that it looks nice and pretty on the inside. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my heat gun and I'm gonna heat up the vinyl just a bit. That will soften it and help smooth out the bubbles. And now I'm just gonna start pressing all over the cup and getting that vinyl down so the adhesive stays transparent on the other side. Okay, and then I'm going to take it off of my stick so that I can see on the inside and that'll show me if there's any places inside where I can still see the adhesive. And I can also take something hard like a popsicle stick and press into that vinyl a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to coat all of the part where I have the vinyl with some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And I'm gonna put a pretty thick layer on here and then I'll clean up the excess later. I wanna get it thick so that it doesn't start drying before I get to the other side of the cup. So I'm not too worried about making it really even right now. I just wanna make sure that the whole thing is coated really well. And then once I get it coated, then I'm going to go back and clean it up so there's no lumps or streaky parts in it. You have to work kind of quickly with this. It dries, seems to dry pretty quickly on the glass. And you'll be left with bald spots if it starts to dry up on you. So I'm trying to move kind of fast but I also don't want it to be chunky, so I need an even, as even as I can get it, coat. All right, that looks pretty good. So then the next thing I'm going to do is add my glitter. So I have a paper plate, that's what I use to catch my excess. And I'm just gonna start on one side and start shaking this beautiful Sands of Time by the Glitter Guy Glitter all over the parts where I've not touched. All right, then I'm gonna let this sit for about half an hour to let it dry and then I'll apply my second coat. Okay, I've let this dry for about 30 minutes. I did lightly brush over with a paintbrush to get some of the loose glitters off. And now I'm gonna go in for round two of the Mod Podge. And again, I'm gonna put a pretty thick layer on to try to get as even of a coat as possible. seem to always have trouble with Mod Podge when I'm doing tumblers, but for some reason with the glass, it's working a little bit easier than usual. On tumblers, I always use the epoxy method. I'm not sure how to do the epoxy method with the glass to get the glitter on without getting it on the clear part. Pretty even coat here, so now I'm gonna go in and 
just kind of smooth it out a little bit. There's not any big lumpy pieces. Okay, that's probably about as good as I'm going to get that. Now let's go ahead and add our next coat of glitter. So once again, I'm going to go in with the Sands of Time and just give it a really good coat. I'm going to let this sit for about another half hour and then come back to check to see if it needs another coat or if we're ready for the next step. So this has just been sitting for a few minutes now and I went ahead and taped off the glass part and I'm going to use a little trick that I usually use when I am sealing my glitter to help some of the glitter from uh, loose glitter from falling off when I don't want it to because I'd like as much of it to stay on the cup as possible. So I use just Whatever the cheapest hairspray I can find is, this I think I got at Walmart for a couple of dollars. And I like to use the hairspray instead of the clear coat spray because you can use it inside and it smells nice and it dries really fast. So I just give it a good coat and then we'll let this sit until it's dry and check the glitter again. This has been drying for about half an hour now and it looks like I have a really nice, clean, even coverage of the gold. And so now I'm going to take the copper rose spray paint and spray over just in case there's any places where you might be able to see through the glass because I'd like for this to be completely coated in gold if possible. The first time I made this cup, I used gold, the shiny metallic gold from Rust-Oleum. I'm out of that now, so I'm gonna use this one instead. I think it'll work just fine. Okay, and then we're gonna let this dry for about another half hour or so. Okay, now that I've spray painted the gold, I'm gonna go in with the Color Shot Wine Stain and just cover over the gold. And I'm going to give it a nice thick coat so that it covers up all the gold paint. We don't want any to see, show through. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to let that dry. Okay, the wine stain color spray paint is dry, and so now I'm going to add another coat of Mod Podge. And this will be for the wine color glitter. Again, I'm gonna put a nice thick coat on here. And you can see how sealing it with the hairspray and then with the two coats of, or I guess three actually coats of spray paint, there is no loose glitter. This stuff is not coming off. Yeah, I'm trying to work a little bit quickly because this dries pretty fast. Now look at the bottom. Okay, and I've got it all coated and now I'm just gonna go in and kind of clean it up a little bit so it's not so thick on there. I'm not too worried about getting it on the tape part here either because I'm going to peel that up in just a little bit. The Anchorman Glitter by The Glitter Guy. And give it its first coat.
I might have missed. I'll get it all coated nicely and evenly. Okay. And that's how that looks. I'm gonna come back in about half an hour and check on that to see how how it does. Okay, so this one actually didn't need another coat of the wine color after that layer of Mod Podge. I did spray my layer of hairspray over it to hold the glitter in place and it's down pretty good. So now I'm going to take off the tape on the inside, so that's okay. Go ahead and get it out anyway. Yeah. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and just smooth it out a little bit to make sure that my lines are nice and even. Like right here, there's a little bit that needs to be cleaned up just a tad bit. There we go. Take my lint-free cloth and clean it up. Clean all the little bitty edges off there. Pretty good. So I still have a teeny tiny amount of glitter that's coming up on my finger and I don't want any of it to get in this glass part here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer of Mod Podge just to make sure that I don't have any loose glitters falling off into that clear part. So I'm just gonna carefully get around this edge here and give the whole thing a really thin coat. And my hairspray works pretty good, but the Mod Podge works even better to hold that glitter in place. And it's gonna look kind of funky now, but once it dries and you put epoxy on it, you won't be able to see that Mod Podge at all. This just gives me a little extra bit of security to help keep that glass part clean, which is honestly the hardest part, clear glass. Making sure there's not any pieces of glitter or lint or bubbles or dust or anything in there. And then before I epoxy, I'll make sure to clean this off really well so there's no fingerprints. Okay, I've got a nice coat on it. Now I'm just gonna smooth it out a bit. Get a little bit more even. Okay, and then we'll let that dry for about another half hour or so. Okay, so now I'm just gonna clean up the glass part to make sure that there are no fingerprints or smudges or little bits of, of Mod Podge or glitter or anything. I want that to be as completely clean as possible. After the Mod Podge, I double checked to make sure no glitter would come off on my hand. So I rubbed it pretty vigorously and, and checked to make sure because I don't want any of that um, wine color glitter getting into the glass part. So I think keeping that glass part clear is the trickiest part of this whole process. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the 91% alcohol and give it a good rub down. Being careful around those edges. And 
And then I can also use my X-Acto knife too to make sure that these are nice and clear here. See, I see a little bit of Mod Podge on this part, so I'm gonna just scrape it off with my knife and then clean it up with my paper towel to try to get a smooth edge. Now, sometimes the paper towel will get caught up in the glitter and then you have to use your X-Acto knife to clear that off too. And then I can use my microfiber cloth to help clean up the paper towel off of there too. Okay, now I'm going to mix some epoxy. I'm using Mr. Nola's Speed Dry for this next coat. And I'm going to mix 10 mLs to start. I'm probably not going to need that much, but I would rather mix a little bit too much than not enough. So I used five mLs of part A and another five mLs of part B. Okay. And then normally I stir this stuff really fast, but I do not want any bubbles in this glass part. So I am going to slip slowly stir to try to minimize the bubbles. And I'm just gonna be as careful as I can be. I may add a little bit of heat towards the end too, just to clear all any little tiny micro bubbles out. All right, so this has a few little bubbles that have risen up to the top, so I'm just gonna take my torch and lightly go over that to pop those. And I'm gonna start with the glass part with the turner turned off, um, just to make sure I get a good little bit of epoxy on this part before I start doing the glitter. Now I've ensured that the glitter is on there really tightly, but just as an extra precaution, I would rather do this part than the glitter part first to make sure that I don't get any glitter on my gloves. Okay, there's a few bubbles in here, but those should massage or spin out and I'll go over it with heat at the very end too. Okay, next I'm just gonna do the seams. So this part here. All right, and now I'm gonna get into the glitter. And I'm just gonna do this without turning to start and get it coated all the way over, and then I'll start spinning and rubbing it in a little better. This way helps me get just a little bit more control of where the resin goes. And again, I mix 10 mLs of epoxy. I'm not sure how many ounces this wine glass is. It didn't say. Okay, so I've got epoxy all over at the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my spinner on and just massage it in like I would a regular tumbler. And this will help get the bubbles out and make sure it's a nice even coat. So I'm gonna pause that for a second and add a little bit more there. Check for any dry spots. And then when it comes back to the glass part, which it should be pretty soon here, I just double check my gloves to make sure there's no glitter on them before I start rubbing down that glass part again. And if there were glitter on my gloves, I would use a different finger or I would change my gloves out. Okay, so I'm gonna use my torch and just go over it lightly to get any bubbles out, especially on that glass part. Those are disappearing really nicely. More right there. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the rest of the epoxy. I have just a tiny bit left. Come on, there we go. If I have any 
excess and just swipe it off into my cup. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go over it with a torch another time. Okay, and I'm going to let this spin for about five to ten minutes and then I'll come back and check on it to see if it needs more torching. Now I'm ready for the reveal. I'm going to take my cover off and this is actually just a Lego bin that I have cut a hole out of and I use this to help protect my tumblers from getting any lint or dust or hair in them. This one, since it's been using speed coat, has been spinning for about three hours but it really only needed to spin for about two and it's ready to come off the turner. See how it is. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to clean up the ridges of this and give it a light sanding and then put the final coat of epoxy on and, and it will be all done. Mm -hmm.